Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to, I think this is episode 12, I guess technically 13 if you count the live stream, of my Out of the Park Baseball 23 Let's Play with the Oakland Athletics. We are in year number five, started in 2022, one, two, three, four, four, we're in our sixth season already, wow. We are in our sixth season already uh, and we've had one winning record, one postseason appearance. Um, it's been a lot of mediocrity. You can see we finished in fourth place three times, finished in last in our first year, and we finished second in 2024, the year we won the postseason. We made it to the postseason. Um, this year feels a little different. And before we get into it, I just, again, I want to say thank you guys for all of the support for this, um, this playthrough. Uh, we are inching, inching, inching closer to a thousand subscribers. So if you're enjoying the content, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button. That would mean the world to me. Getting to that thousand, that thousand uh, sub number is a goal I set for myself at the beginning of the year. Um, when I was sitting at about what 400 subs, give or take. Uh, so the fact that I've doubled that in four months is pretty crazy to me. So thank you. So again, if you enjoy the content, press subscribe. Um, so yeah, so this, this year feels a little different. Um, I feel like we're starting to kind of move forward and, you know, some of the, the talent that we have is starting to make a difference on the team. So you can see we're 20 and 13, uh, through the month of April. Uh, we are in first place, uh, Offensively, we are, for the first time ever, middle of the pack. Granted, it's early, but we are seventh in runs scored. We're sixth in runs against. Um, and that's without our best pitcher in Ryan Gleason, who will be back in about a week. So that'll be nice. We get Cassius Thomas back in about six weeks. We picked him up in a trade during the live stream. Uh, some seemed like a no-brainer at the time. Uh, not quite as good as he appeared to be when we first got him, but still, that stuff, that movement, a couple of plus-plus pitches, and he's only 23 years old. He should be uh, a, a really solid piece for us. All of our starters have ERAs in the threes, except for Danny Alasco, who is struggling out of the gate. Uh, our bullpen has been pretty good, um, at least the two main pieces, Garcia and, and Gunther. Uh, Depperman got off to another rough start, so I'm thinking we move him out of the stopper role, put him in a setup slash middle relief role. Nick Hansen was our closer last season, um, is working in middle relief this year, 25 strikeouts and 16 innings. He's been good. So our bullpen's been pretty good. Our starting pitching, less standing in Alaska has been pretty good. And our offense, surprisingly, has been halfway decent through the first month of the season. You can see Robert Poisson, seven home runs, 21 RBIs in 30 games. Uh, good for a 769 OPS, uh, 0.9 war. James Wood, uh, fresh off of a uh, long-term contract that is just ridiculously cheap, making 1.4 this year, 2.8 next year, 4 million the year after that, then two team options at 5.5, uh, putting up an 839 OPS early on. Nick Cartwright, we called up because the Rule 5 acquisition that we picked up, Luis uh, Guerra, um, is out for a month. I think at the time it was like six weeks. He was only seven for his first 42. So he's going to be out for three to four weeks. And then we're going to put him on a rehab assignment after that. So he'll probably be down for a couple of months, which gives um, Nick Cartwright a chance. And Nick Cartwright is raking through his first 20 games in the big leagues. We drafted him in the second round last year. He's 32 for 88. He's got 10 extra base hits, hitting 364, uh, batting out of the number two spot for us. Joe Adele's doing okay. Um, not great, but he's doing okay. Three home runs, knocked in 17, a 732 OPS. I mean, the unsustainable BABIP. So, unfortunately, I feel like these numbers will start to regress. Now, again, we have Adele signed to a long-term deal. He's making $15.2 million. We're only paying him 13.7. He's making $14 million next year and then has an opt-out. So, my hope is that we can either trade him prior to the opt-out or that he opts out. So I, I am looking to trade Joe Adele, maybe not this year, but almost definitely next season. Um, and that way, Liam Deegan can just be our starting left fielder going forward. He seems to have figured it out here um, over the last 
you know, almost full season. Uh, Jacob Stallings isn't really hitting, but we don't have him in here for his offense. We have him in here for his defense. I am going to make sure that he doesn't reach his vesting option, which is 480 plate appearances. Uh, or excuse me, it's 120 games. He's not going to play in 120 games this year because um, I have a feeling we'll be able to bring him back for less than that $14 million next season. So um, we will. What's he on pace for right now? He's on pace right now for 128 games. So we are going to have to back off of this a little bit. So we will bring in Gutierrez every fourth game. Uh, get Stallings out there. Not playing quite as much because, like I said, I think I'll be able to bring him back for less than that. Tony Bullard is not playing much. Uh, he is sort of the odd man out of this rotation, believe it or not. Um, we'll probably look to move him as well. Uh, Jose Santabria, uh, we picked up in the offseason from the White Sox in exchange for a couple of players we picked up in the Rule 5. Um, and he's gotten off to an okay start. I think he... Probably was rushed. He skipped double A. He skipped triple A. So we may send him back down to the minors here at some point for some additional seasoning. Zach Carden is giving us exactly what we needed, which is a ton of power. He's only hitting a buck ninety, but he's got a five forty slugging percentage, almost an eight hundred OPS, an OPS plus of over one ten. So he's been fine. I don't care that he's only hitting one ninety. Uh, Arias isn't hitting this year. Uh, he hit uh, he hit pretty well for San Diego last year, but again, he's out there for his defense. He is out there for his defense. Crow Armstrong and Ardone aren't hitting either. Uh, Ardone is a bit of a concern um, given how good he was last season. We pulled him out of the starting lineup and uh, against righties. Um, we switched and we gave Deegan. So Deegan is now in there every day against, uh, against righties. And then Crow Armstrong, um, he'll be back next season, but it likely will be as a backup is we have a lot of players that uh, are looking to break through here over the next 12 months. we got Kevin Parker Jr., <coughs> who will likely be um, our starting second, well, might be our starting DH next year. I mean, if Cartwright continues to hit, I mean, we have a, a good problem in our middle infield. He's not a shortstop, doesn't have the arm for third. Uh, is tall enough to play first, I guess, but we'll just sort of see what happens there. Kenny Gomez, um, great bat. Uh, he's probably the one that replaces Adele. I'm going to swing at everything, but uh, should hit for high enough average, high enough contact to make it worth it. And then Carlos Pacheco is probably our starting center fielder next year. So we have some players that are absolutely looking looking to break through here over the next uh, 12 months. So we will have some decisions to make as we get through this season. And speaking of this season, let's start simming May. So we'll do what we normally do. We will sim May day by day, and then um, I will do June offline, and then we will come back and we will do July. So we win this game 6-4. to four. We score 3 in the top of the ninth. Let's go. Zach Carden with a home run in the ninth inning. Thayer goes 3 and 2 thirds. The bullpen uh, pitches really, really well, as they have all season long. So we pick up the win. Game 3 in Washington against the Nats. 10.40 a.m. Pacific time start is an 8-3 loss. We lose two out of three to Washington. We got the Yankees. Long road trip. Washington, New York, and Baltimore. So three in New York against the Yankees now. Hmm. So that's a rough start to this playthrough. We'll put Weisenberger on a rehab assignment. One and two so far this month. Let's end that streak right here with a win. Nope. That's three straight losses. Let's avoid the sweep at least. Nope. So we are one and four this month. Not a great start to this sim. Uh, where are the Orioles? The Orioles are 28 and 9. Holy crap. They have the best offense in baseball and the best bullpen. Their pitching, their starting pitching is terrible. Their bullpen is elite and their hitting is elite. Jose Miranda, the former Oakland A, getting it done for Baltimore this season. Wow, 28-9 for uh, for Baltimore. So this is not encouraging. Let's see how this four-game series goes in Baltimore. Yep, that's five in a row. Ugh, Gleason suffers a setback. We've now lost six in a row. 
Hey, there we go. We finally win a game. We're 22-19. and 19. Deegan, a couple of RBIs. Estes picks up the win. Yeah, we're not pitching and we're not... I mean, it's really... It's, it's amazing how much these numbers fluctuate early in the season, but I guess small sample size and all that. Um... Yeah, what, I mean, do we... What changes can we make? I don't know that there's a ton of changes that we can make to the lineup right now. So Stallings, I need to... When he's fatigued at all, uh, I want to sub in Gutierrez. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the bottom of our lineup isn't hitting. Uh, isn't at least isn't hitting for a high average. Um, the average just isn't there. It's crazy. I don't want to call up any of these guys yet. They're not ready. So we just roll with what we have and and hope that that we can. I mean, you know, that was a six game losing streak. Hopefully, we can win this one. Take two out of four against Baltimore. Split the series against the Orioles. Nope. All right. So we are two and seven. This month, but at least now we're home for six. So hopefully home cooking changes things up a little bit. We win there five to four. Joe Adele a couple of hits. RBIs for Cartwright, Adele, Wood, Carden. Gray goes five. Gunther blows the save. Ooh, Hansen. He has the last four games. His ERA has gone from 2.95 to six. All right. Depperman and Garcia picks up the win. Garcia we got from the White Sox uh, in the offseason. He's been really good so far. All right, can we win two in a row for the first time in the month of May? We do. We win two to one, and Gleason is back. That's huge. Uh, Cartwright, a couple of hits. Poisson hits his 10th home run of the season. Thayer picks up the win. And now who do we send down? So I think Franklin is the choice to go back to the bullpen. Uh, did he start in AAA? No. Who do we... Uh, I guess none of these guys started in AAA, right? Roy Garcia is going to go to AAA. And... Da -da 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 -da. Injuries. Gleason will come back up. And he will go right into the rotation. So let's make Franklin a middle reliever. Let's make Burroughs a middle reliever. Uh, and what else do I want to do? I want to take a look really quick, make sure I don't have 100 players on my... Uh, yeah, 39. We're good there. In fact, let's do that. Make sure that we have enough players on all of our rosters. Um, are there any? We may need to fill in our minor league system here a little bit. Let's look at some free agents. Um, what is this doing? Oh, it's showing popularity. Okay. Um, that's all pitchers. Look at all hitters. Wow, there's still some decent players out there. What does he want? $12 million. Yeah, okay. Castellanos, what does he want? He only wants seven. I mean, I wouldn't mind bringing in a Nick Castellanos if we could figure out a way to clear $7 million. Brandon Lowe. He wants six and a half. Wow, there are some talented players still left here. It's a bit of a surprise. Oh, man, yeah, I would like to bring in Castellanos. Bring in that right-handed bat for a year. We need what? Oops, not what I wanted to do. This 
So we need to clear... Like, yeah, it's not going to work. We need to clear like $15 million. Um, I don't know. Maybe can we trade Adele? Wow, nobody wants Joe Adele. Does nobody have any money? I retain the whole thing. Yeah, nobody has any money. That's got to be it, right? Yeah. Brewers have a little bit. Yankees don't have any. Wow, and nobody has any money. That's crazy. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, all right, so game three against Seattle. And we get the sweep after a, after we lose seven out of eight. We come back and win three in a row at home. Nope, we lose ten to two. We're still in first place. I mean, that's tenuous at best, especially now that we're playing the team that's right behind us. Uh, well, I guess the Astros aren't right behind us. They're three games back. So they could end up tied for first place if they sweep us. Let's see how this goes. Tyler Molly on the mound for Houston. It's a 3-1 win for us. So we've won three out of four. Stallings, couple hits, couple RBIs. Estes pitches really well. Garcia picks up the win. Game two against the Astros. It's a 3-2 to two loss. Guerra gets hurt again, so his return is delayed another couple weeks. Game three. Let's take this series against Houston, please. We're at home. Thinking about it, we win seven to six. All right, so we win back-to-back -back series. So we lose six out of seven, and then we win four out of six. Not great, but uh, winning back-to-back -back series. Winning series is what it's all about. I mean, you can win series; it's a good thing. So Wood has a home run, Poisson homers, Stallings homers, Carden hits his tenth, Deegan's at two thirty-three. Gunther blows the save. Depperman gets the win. We get a day off. Followed by three at Tampa, three at Texas, three at Houston. All right, well, let's see how this series goes. Did Patino... He's not very good. Two and seven, 6.79. Hopefully we can win that game. Nope, we lose eight to six. He didn't even pitch. Okay. All right. Oh, here, and now he's scheduled to pitch today. Can we win this one? Yeah, not a great month after the way April started out for us. I was really encouraged. We lose back-to-back -back games. Are we going to get swept? We are. So we are 6-12 and 12 this month after going, fifth, after going 20 and 13 to start the season. Uh, we are still in first place somehow. Uh, we're tied with... Seattle, and we have Texas on the books here. I mean, Texas isn't particularly good this year, so hopefully this is a, a team that we can rebound against. Or are we going to lose four in a row? Let's see. Hey, we went four to one. Cartwright, a couple of hits. Adele, two hits, two RBIs, including his sixth home run. Nolasco pitches well. Game two at Texas. Another win, 8-4. to four. The bottom of the order looks like it's getting it done there. Poisson, two hits in an RBI. Deegan, two hits in, in an RBI. Arias has three hits in two RBIs. Armstrong goes four for four. Burroughs gets the win. How is uh, yeah, Gleason out of the gate? Two starts. Yeah, he hasn't pitched much. Hasn't pitched much because he's still recovering. Uh, as we look for the sweep of the Rangers here on the road, a road sweep would be nice. Going into Houston, a 9-1 win. So we do sweep the Rangers on the road. We get three more hits from Cartwright. Adele, three hits. Santa Bria, three hits, four runs knocked in. A a Adele and Santa Bria both homer. Yeah, he's slightly below average. I feel like... He needs to spend a little bit. I mean, low work ethic is a little concerning. You have to wonder if he's ever going to reach. I mean, if he reaches this eye discipline, he's going to be a whole lot better than he is today. Um, 
Cartwright has 19 doubles in 39 games. And he's never going to walk a lot, but, I mean, he ain't at 300. If he ain't at 320, I will take it. All right, three games at Houston, followed by the AL best Baltimore Orioles coming in. All right, so Garris still hurt, which is fine. I mean, it just means that Cartwright's going to get more playing time. So it was 1-1 going to the ninth. We scored two in the tenth. They scored one. We get a pinch hit home run from Poisson in the tenth. James Wood hits his seventh home run of the year. Gleason with six shutout innings. Gunther blows the save. Depperman gets the win. Garcia the save. So we've won four in a row. Is this guy any good? Nope. In fact, I want to go to... My phone buzzes. I want to go here and go to the International Complex. And let's look at... I'm basically going to get rid of everybody who's um, 19 or 20 and is half a star. Clear up some space to give our scout an opportunity to find some additional talent. Because once it hits 50 players, you stop getting notifications. So let's clear out all this. I hate to call it junk because they are real players, but um, you know what I'm getting at. All right, so we've won four straight. Looking for five in a row now in Houston. Nope, that's a loss. Seven to six in 10 innings. So we scored two in the ninth. Who got the start? Estes got the start. Gave up six in six. Crow Armstrong and Arias, both homer, but we lose to Houston. Looking to take the series, though. We've won one, two, three. Three of our last four series. If we can win this game, it'll be four out of five. 30 and 26 going into this final game against the Astros. We win 9-6. All right, so we've won four out of five. After losing three in a row to Tampa, I'll take that. So Brandon Nimmo did sign a contract finally, signed with Houston. Deegan has two hits. Cartwright, two hits, three runs scored. Poisson, two hits, two runs knocked in. Crow Armstrong continues to hit. I guess he heard the rumors that he was going to lose his starting job next year, and he's started to hit as of late. 261 OPS of around 700. I will take it. And Alasco pitches well enough for the win. We're off today, and then we have a series against the Orioles. So we're two and a half games up over the Mariners, four up, four and a half up on the Angels, five up on the Astros, six and a half up on the Rangers. Uh, so we got Gray, Thayer, and Gleason going. How are the Orioles now? 41 and 17, best record in baseball. Uh, their starters have gotten better. Their offense is still the best in the American League. Their bullpen is still the best in the American League, and their starting pitching has gotten better. So they are going to be a force this year. But we have them for three games here at home. Let's see how things go in Oakland. We've won four out of five. Five out of six, actually. We get shut out there. So we lost three out of four to them earlier. So that's now five out of six we've lost to the Orioles this month. We finally win. We win that one, the last game of the series, 10 to 8. Poisson, 3 for 4, 2 RBIs. Cartwright, 2 for 5, 2 RBIs. Cardin, 2 for 4, 2 RBIs. Gutierrez with a couple of hits. Gleason gets lit up, but uh, we do the job against their bullpen. Our bullpen was a little better than theirs. Poisson, Cardin, and Deegan Homer. Uh, and it's. The last day of the month, so Garrett Whitlock traded, uh, he's now a minor leaguer in this save, traded for uh, another minor leaguer. Uh, nothing interesting that we need to take a look at. I do want to see, though, if anybody is interested in Mr. Bullard. Three star, three and a half star. Luna, Drew Strotman. We could bring back Angeles. Uh, Gyro Lopez, meh. Again, it's it's a money thing. I don't think anybody has any money. If I retain the entirety of his contract, does that change things? Yeah. 
Nobody has any money. It's weird. I mean, it changes things a little bit, I guess. Not that the returns we're getting are any good, but... Um, the other name I was thinking about trading was... Nolasco. Uh, I want to say he's... Re I mean, he's regressed. I mean, you can see his ratings have dropped. He's not the same pitcher he was when we signed him. His movement has gone from a potential 55 to a 40. His control has gone from a 65 to a 55. If he had ended up at 60, 55, 65, he would have been a stud. At 55, 40, and 55, he's still not terrible. But for what we're paying him, we need to make a change. The problem is, again, nobody has any money. So, I mean, I literally would have to, like if I did this and retained 100%, we might get some offers. And then I might be able to back off it if we can get someone who who is, who if we can find a team that's interested that maybe has a little bit of money. It's not like we're talking a ton. We're talking, what, $6 million, $7 million between the two of them. I don't want relievers. I don't want relief pitchers, though. That's sort of the issue here. All anybody's offering me is relief pitchers, and that holds no interest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as per usual, I could say that I'm going to edit that out, but we know that I won't. So I apologize for sneezing in your ear. Uh, yeah, there's just nothing there right now. All right. Well, we'll see what happens as maybe we get closer to um, the trade deadline. Let's sim the last day in May. And it's a 7-4 to four loss. So Josiah Gray is now hurt. Um... It's not hurting. His, I'm going to let him pitch through it. It's not hurting his pitching. Uh, player development. Cartwright gets better. Kevin Parker gets better. Oh, man. He's up to potential of almost five stars now. Can he play the outfield? I mean, maybe left. I don't know where I'm going to play him, but I'm going to have to get his bat in the lineup uh, at some point next season. Pedro Pineda, he's another one I think I'd like to move. Dylan Campbell is getting better. Yeah, we got a lot of young talent. Sarabi is getting better. All right. AL Batter of the Month, Josh Lau. Or is it Lowe? I can't remember. Jacoby Long wins batter of the month in the National League. Pitcher of the month in the AL, Angel Roman in the NL. Jaseel De La Cruz, rookie of the month in the AL, Dari Segura. And De La Cruz is your rookie of the month in the NL. So we are 32 and 29 at the end of May. We're two and a half games up. Fans are still coming out a little bit. 27,000 fans up from 24. Um... We're tied for sixth in runs scored, but we are twelfth in runs against. So, it's it's bizarre how backwards things are for the A's right now. We're sixth in runs for and twelfth in runs against. So, we are being outscored by twelve runs, even though we are three games over five hundred. So the offense, and I'm going to make some changes to the lineup. I think Deegan isn't hitting enough to be our leadoff hitter. I need to figure out who our leadoff hitter is going to be. I think next year it's going to be Pacheco. Oh, he's his discipline dropped. That was a 65. I don't know who my leadoff hitter is going to be next year. Maybe Parker? I don't know who my leadoff hitter is, but I know it can't be Deegan right now with his 221 batting average. So I'm going to make a couple tweaks to the lineup. So against righties. How's Santa Bria doing? He's still hitting just okay. Um, Ardone is at 186. I think we may go back to Ardone. Stick him back in there. I mean, the ratings suggest 55, 60, 50, 70, 50, that he should be able to at least get on base, even if he's not, um, even if he's not uh, hitting for a high average. 
And we'll see how that works out. Anything I want to do with my pitching. So my starting pitching has been rough. Uh, all that stuff, all that talk in, in April about how, how things how things were going for our pitching staff is kind of stopped here. Our, our pitching is now n- not particularly good. Garcia's pitching well. Gunther, yeah, I don't think I want a st- – I don't think I want him as a stopper. We will do high leverage for both him and Depperman, though, because they are our two best relievers. Uh, Hansen had that really rough stretch, uh, but has sort of bounced back here a little bit. Brule's pitching okay. Beckway's pitching okay. Burroughs has been fine. So our bullpen has been okay. Our starting pitching has been rough. So hopefully that can turn around here in June. Uh, So yeah, when we come back, guys, it'll be July 1st and we will get through the month of July. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, we're back. It's July 1st and not a whole lot of good happened in the month of June. You can see we are under 544 and 45. We went 12 and 16 for a second consecutive month. So that 20 and 13 start is ancient history. We are not hitting. We are not pitching. And you can see there's a distinct lack of Joe Adele in our lineup. That's because we traded him to the team right ahead of us in the standings, the Houston Astros. Adele was not hitting particularly well. Um, And because of that, my fear was that he was not going to opt out of the contract. So I decided to get whatever I could. So we ended up trading Adele. And let me find the trade here. We sent Joe Adele, and we retained 55%. And because his new contract hasn't kicked in yet, we're only responsible for the um, the current deal. I don't know if that's a real thing or if that's a bug in out-of-the-park baseball, but I'm going to take advantage of it given that I'm the A's. Um, so we retained 15% of his contract. You can see he was hitting 254, 297, 401, and 89 OPS plus 0.1 more. It just wasn't very good. Was likely not to opt out of the contract when it was all said and done. So Houston is going to have him next year for 14 million and then potentially 23 and 26. So we retained 15% of that. We also traded Kevin Doom, who was that first baseman with the weird stat line, 22 year old. Um, I, you know, he wasn't a, he's not a bad prospect, but I don't think he's ever going to hit enough. And Jack Weisenberger to the Astros and we get Nick McLean in return. McLean is just a very good defensive outfielder, something that we are lacking. Uh, so we should probably put him in triple a, put him on the 40 man roster and put him in triple a. Um, he is, uh, he'll likely be up at some point. Uh, I can't imagine that we're going to get through the year healthy. So that was that. Um, yeah, it wasn't a good month. There's not really a whole hell of a lot to look at. Our pitching staff was bad. Uh, our bullpen was pretty good. Our bullpen has been sort of the one bright spot. Our bullpen's been good. Our, Our offense has been better than it has in past seasons, but still not great. We're still 11th in runs scored. See, Poisson's having a great year. Another really good season for him on pace for 30 and 100, over five war. Um, Cartwright's average is down to 280. Uh, Wood has got 12 home runs on pace for 22, but that's a significant step down from a year ago. Um, Deegan's not hitting. Carden's not. I mean, we're not really getting much offense at all, but we're hanging around. We're three games behind the Astros. Um, We get... um, uh, we get Cassius Thomas back shortly. He's been on a rehab assignment. Given that he hasn't pitched in ages, I wanted to uh, let him get his rehab assi- full rehab assignment in. So we'll get him back in a week. Uh, and then again, we have our young guys who are kind of itching to uh, to play in the bigs. I mean, you can see Kenny Gomez is absolutely raking right now in AAA. Pacheco is uh, getting on base at a 350 clip, uh, stealing some bases. And Kevin Parker is right there with him. So three young players looking to come up. Cassius Thomas will be up shortly as well. So, um, yeah, it hasn't been a particularly... Let's disable that for Saravia. It hasn't been a particularly good month, um, but I'm still optimistic. Uh, It's July 1st. That means it is time for international amateurs. So let's see if there are any pitchers that are worth taking a shot at. Nope. 
go back to batters, and I think the obvious choice here is Mr. Tarango. And if he doesn't work out, we can take a run at Israel Serrano. High work ethic, kind of a third baseman, I guess. So let's take a run at Tarango and see if he wants $5 million from the Oakland A's. Uh, and let's look at, I didn't think, I don't think I looked at, yeah, I didn't look at the player development yet. Uh, yeah, we took a fan interest bump for trading Adele, which was bound to happen. Uh, so Thayer's stuff dropped, his, his control improved. Uh, he hasn't been particularly good really either year. Uh, Ryan Gleason's stuff got a little worse. His movement and his stamina got better. Estes gets better. Pacheco gets better. That eye is back up to a 65. Wait. Set his eyes back up to a 65. All right, whatever. Um, that looks like it's about it. Your batter of the month in the AL is Vlad in the NL. Got Juan Soto. Pitcher of the month in the AL, Gavin Williams. AJ Minter in the National League. Rookie of the month, Chris Skinta of the Guardians. And in the National League, Keone Kavoko. Uh, Kenny Gomez is your batter of the month in the PCL. So he is... Uh, Going to be up sooner rather than later. I think ultimately the plan, <clears throat> once we get into next season, is for Guerra to actually get some time in Double A or in Triple A rather. And he actually absolutely raked in Triple A during his rehab assignment. But the the bat isn't there yet, so um, I'd like to get Gomez up and get him in the lineup here sooner rather than later. Um, maybe the time is now. Maybe we send Sarah Bia down for a bit, let him get some development, and call Gomez up. I mean, it can't hurt. Let's see. So let's put Gomez out there uh, against righties in... What do we want to do? Let's make him the DH. Yeah, because he's not a particularly good fielder. Um, I don't want to bat him lead off though. We'll bat him lead off, And we'll do something like that. Bat Gomez there. And then what are we missing against? We're missing a right fielder. I guess it'll be James Wood. Because he can hit a... L Actually, they both can hit lefties relatively well. Um, in fact, I think Gomez is actually better. Yeah, 55, 55, 60. So we will put Gomez out there. Bat him sixth. Let's see if that works. All right, well, let's get to it. We got a four-game series in Oakland. And the All-Star game is set correctly. If you watch the live stream, you know I made a correction there. So we lose right out of the gate to Texas. So the losing ways continue. We bounce back with a 3-2 victory. We get two hits, two RBIs from Poisson. Our Doan goes 0 for 2 but reaches three times via walk. Estes pitches good enough to get the win but isn't doesn't stay in the game long enough. Game three in Texas. Let's see if we can get back to 500. We cannot. We are two games under 500 now, looking to get the split of this series against the Rangers. <sighs> Six games out of first place. This is going sideways in a hurry. Uh, we did sign Jose Tarango, so that's some good news. So we have another elite outfielder uh, in our minor league system. All-star game rosters. Uh, Sean Gunther made it. And Poisson made it. And that's it. It's not a surprise. Uh, prospects. Just Pacheco. Interesting. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Um, we are a game out of the wild card. We're six games out of first place. We're three games under 500. Um, hoping maybe that the All Star break gives us a bit of a breather here and we can sort of reset things. Uh, actually, you know what? We are going to have to call up Thomas, which is fine. So, who goes down? Garcia goes down because he's been terrible. We'll call up Cassius Thomas, and he's going to go right in the rotation for Thayer, I think. Nolasco has had some ups and downs, but at least he's a positive war pitcher. Thayer has been just bad. Maybe he has a better role in the in the bullpen. We'll see. 
Uh, but we got Houston coming up out of the out of the All Star break, so we got the team right ahead of us. So we got a chance to claw back into it if we can play well against the Astros out of the break. Let's see if we can reset our rotation here. Okay, so he's good. So we're gonna move Gleason there, Estes there, Gray. Yeah, that'll work. So we're going to go Gleason out of the break. Estes, Gray, Thomas, and Nolasco. Our bullpen is fine. Uh, Kenny Gomez, five for his first 16, all singles. What's Stallings? He's on pace to play 120 games, so i got to keep an eye on that for sure because we don't want him reaching that 120 game. Uh, Mark, so let's get to the draft. Let's get through the draft, and then we'll talk about uh, potential a uh, trade deadline deal. So game one against the Astros. 5-4 win. Big win out of the gate. A win that we score three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning to come from behind. So Gleason goes five and a third. Garcia gets the win. We get two hits, two RBIs from Poisson. Kenny Gomez with a couple more singles. All right. Wins a win. So, ooh, Hanson got hurt. How long's he out? No, he's just fragile. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can win game number two here at home against the Astros. Get a game closer to 500. Yep. We are now one game under 500 at 47 and 48. Another come from behind victory. Another walk off. This time a three run homer from Zach Carden off the former A, Weisenberger. Let's go. So Estes pitches well. Depperman gets the win. Cartwright at 283. He's got on pace for 56 doubles in 128 games. Um, yeah, he's getting it done. All right, so a win here gets us the sweep of Houston and back to 500. And we lose 4-3. to three. All right, so we're two games under 500, four games out of first place. We are a half game out of the wild card, and it is draft time. We are picking 12th. So we were supposed to pick 10th. The White Sox have a comp pick. The Orioles... The best team in the major leagues, the Orioles, have the number two pick in the draft. They think we're going to take Tony Medina. He looks okay. Uh, let's look. Let's start the draft. Oof. Man, there is some talent. Pit, there is some pitch, hitting talent in the draft. I wouldn't mind one of these pitchers falling to us. Willie Garibay, I wouldn't mind him falling to us. Amari Edwards doesn't look bad. Let's just see who's there. So none of the pitchers that I said would I would like to fall to us are there. No, well, that is fine. Uh, you got Jesus Jerez, who's not a number one pick, and Machado who looks okay, but not necessarily at the number twelve pick given given what is still here. Holy crap, uh, Alex Pino. 18 years old, uh, only wants $1.6 million. David Aldridge, only wants 1.3. OSA doesn't like either of those guys quite as much. Yeah, they think we should take Pino, I, which makes sense. I mean, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. 70, 75, 60, 50, 80. Yep, right, we're not even gonna overthink it. We're just gonna take Alex Pino with the number twelve overall pick, six foot, one hundred and ninety pound center fielder out of Wright City, Missouri. Welcome to the Oakland A's organization. Go to the second round, and wow, Aldridge is still there. They think we should take Aguilar. OSA likes him more than we do. Both of these guys are still available. I think we go Aldridge. I think we go Aldridge with the second pick. That bat is just too much to give up. Now, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that Aguilar is still there. He's not. Okay, that's all right. We got two really good players with our first two picks. I am really pleased with the way the first two rounds of this draft are going. Alex Cousin, not really a third baseman. Certainly not a center fielder. Could probably be a corner outfielder. Probably be a left fielder with those ratings. 
He's not bad. Who do they think we should take? Ishan Kambal. Okay. I could do that. We, I mean, we need pitching. Good move, really good movement in control. 21 years old. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna take our scouts' recommendation here and take Kambal with the third pick. And all those hitters are still available, so we certainly didn't lose anything by waiting. So we got Jose Perez, uh, not a shortstop, but uh, high work ethic, high leader, high loyalty. 18 years old, committing to Gonzaga. Um, what is his demand? One million. Yep, absolutely. All right. So we got Tony Madrid. This was the guy they said that we were going to take. No. Yeah, this was the guy they said we were going to take with our first pick, wasn't it? Um, man, there's a lot. We're going to take Cousin here. There is a ton of talent in this draft, man. Wow. Okay. Um, let's start looking at individual pitch potential. All right. This is kind of where it looks like it might stop, though at least from a, a pitching perspective. No real fastballs to speak of on any of these guys. Nehomar Ochoa Acosta. No, we got one-star pitcher. Which really shouldn't matter, but he's got a change-up that won't develop. Tanya's no. Jackson Sanders, no. Yeah, not a lot of pitchers. Let's look at fielding ratings. See if we can find ourselves a couple of elite defensive players. David Mejia looks okay. Pat Coney can't turn the double play, has no arm, which means he's not really an infielder. He's probably a first baseman. Outfield, he's good enough. Jesus Vega. I mean, he could play shortstop easily with those ratings. I feel like there were still some good, some potentially, yeah, there is still some potentially, I don't want to say elite, but good bats out there. So I don't want to start taking a run at flawed players when you've got someone like Tony Madrid, a 17-year-old with high work ethic. May not ever field a ton, but the bat's there. Omar Lopez is still available. Yep, we'll take him. Yeah, I mean, we're just, we've got these bats that are available. Why not take them? Um, Daniel Moore. Twenty-two-year-old doesn't really have an infield position. Maybe third base. The arm was good enough, but all right. Now we can look at fielding ratings. Let's look at outfield range. We got any elite outfielders? Jose Ramirez. Holy crap! He can play the outfield. It's a shame he can't hit at all. Okay. Les Mana Race out of Mississippi State. Very good defensively. Yep, we will take him. Tony Cabrera. Yeah, he can play all over the diamond, really. Infield range. I mean, he's probably. I mean, third base, probably a probably the right the right place for Cabrera. But I don't know if the bat's enough. Uh, it might come along out of LSU. 65, 75, 60. Jesus Nunez. Sure. You never have too many elite defenders in your uh, in your minor league system, right? Jaden Batson. Low intelligence, but good defense. It's good catcher ability. Oscar White. Can't hit. Amari McKinnon. Can't hit. Baza, low work ethic. Pass there, low work ethic. Surprised that that there aren't any catchers with a high work ethic still available. That's usually a staple of uh, catchers in the draft is they've got a high work ethic. Uh, all right, so we've made ten picks. Like nine of them have been uh, have been um, 
have been hitters. Go, oh, right. I want to be looking at pitchers. That would help. We got any knuckleballers? No knuckleballers. A couple of knuckle change-ups or knuckle curves, I should say. It's a screwball, right? Yep. Circle change. No. Yuck. Forkball? Is that what that is? Yeah, look at Brian Andrews throwing all the pitches dead average. You gotta love it. Just looking for a young guy who has high... I mean, this is the right thing that I'm looking for, an 18-year-old with high work ethic, but he's terrible. Cutters. Split finger. Low work ethic. If I can't find anybody here, I'm just going to let the AI finish. star. There needs to be something there. Sinker. Sinker baller. Ryan Arrington. Two-pitch pitcher. Yeah, there's just nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm glad we drafted that pitcher where we did. At least we get a pitcher out of the deal. Um, Curveball. And I guess we can take a cost and I mean he's one star. I mean, is he ever really I mean, I guess he could. Doesn't have high work ethic though. Change up. Meh. Alright, we're gonna let the AI finish up here. Complete the draft and see what the AI does for us over the last ten rounds of the draft. Let's go in and negotiate with our draftees. Love the fact that he only wants 1.6. The rest of these guys, we will offer what they're asking for. Yeah, Alex Pino and David Aldridge as our, I mean, our top five picks, top six picks, I am absolutely stoked about. Absolutely stoked. Alex Pino looks like he's going to be a monster. David Aldridge is our second round pick. The bat is still there. Maybe not have it, may not have a position. But the bat is is too much to pass up on. Uh, Kambal, his movement's already up to a 70 just after drafting him. I don't know that he's, he's going to have the stamina, but he could. He could. Jose Perez, uh, again, maybe not a position just yet. He could play second, maybe third. Uh, but high work ethic, high leader. Alex Cousin, another kind of positionalist type player, but another great bat. And then Tony Madrid, another great bat. So we picked up five really solid bats in this draft. Super happy with the way the draft worked out for us this year. Ryan Bell is our sixth round pick. Okay, we can enable AI promotions there. Anybody else I need to do that with? I like to go through and just, yeah, Caden Markham has started to go the wrong way. That's a little disappointing. Same with Zach Bennett. Make sure that there is nobody else that I need to... Uh, Dylan Campbell's down to two stars. That's too bad. That's too bad. I, I kind of liked his profile. Um, Pineda, yeah, we're probably going to end up... I keep saying that, but we keep end up not trading him. Um... All right, so we are on the other side of the uh, draft. So, I mean, where do we where do we look to improve? We're 14th in runs scored. We're 10th in runs against. We're four games out of first place. We're like a game out of the wild card, half game out of the wild card. I mean, it's it's always offense, but where, right? Where do we look to improve offensively? We're set at second, third. I would argue that we're set and right, although Wood is not a great hitter. Uh, we've got Kenny Gomez that we can stick out there if we need to. Yeah, I mean, I guess offensively, we just we need help. We just need help offensively. I don't know. I mean, we need help pitching-wise. Behind Gleason and Estes, it's, it's iffy. 
Like Josiah Gray, what does he want for an extension? He wants 3.4. We don't have the money to bring him back. Cassius Thomas could develop into something, so Gleason, Estes, and Thomas aren't bad. We could use a pitcher. We could use a batter. But again, do we have the money to um, to make this happen? Again, I mean, Luis Garcia is good, but where would we play him? We don't need him at second. Can't play short with those um, with that range. Pete Alonso is making eighteen million dollars to hit two forty. Javi Baez is signed through this season, and he can't really hit anymore. Barrero's not a shortstop. Alec Bohm can't really hit. J.P. Crawford. Not really a shortstop anymore. Yeah, I mean, none of these bats are really better than what we have. So what would be the point? Eloy's hitting okay. Yeah, I mean, let's look at pitchers. And a lot of relief pitchers, as per usual. Uh, Zach Wheeler is making $16 million. I mean, I wouldn't be averse to bringing in a Zach Wheeler. Um, like if we started with, um, Gleason to try to even out, not Gleason, um, Velasco to sort of even out the contracts a little bit, Oakland cannot afford, right. So they don't like that deal at all, which is fine. I mean, that's a negotiation. Look, oh we got a lot of players injured. Huerta's injured. Parker's injured. Cologne's injured. He was our first-round pick a year ago. I would trade him now, though, if you would be interested in that. What about if we added in Pineda? Aiden Miller. Okay, so that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. We got Colby Iyer. Uh, he's been okay. Get Jack Flaherty back. He hasn't been good this year, but was really good last year. What would the White Sox want? I mean, I would be willing to... White Sox can't. So what if I give them 124074 to counteract? Okay, so neither team can afford this deal. It's weird. Yeah, nobody has any money at all, which is kind of dumb. But let's see. Is anybody interested in Alaska? What if I retained and then work backwards? Really? Not any interest at all in Danny Nolasco. If we go to 100%, we can probably um, make the deal work and then back off if we can find it, if we can do this with a team that has some money. But I don't know that trading one of the few starting pitchers we have is a, is a wise move. That's part of the issue here. Uh, David Grew. Yeah, see, like, they can't afford to take on any of it, so it's not worth the time. All right, uh, so I think let's, I guess, take a look at Bullard, who's hitting a buck fifty, and add in Cologne, and I retain here. We get a pitcher that way. And it looks like some interesting options, maybe. We go starting pitchers. I am recording, right? I am, okay. 23-year-old, meh. A lot of two-star. Sandy Mejia, extreme fly ball pitcher. He looks okay. 
There's David Grew. I could get him. Jack Fecko. That's a name. Colby Kubitschek is interesting. 65 movement. Hasn't pitched all that well, but he's pitching in the PCL, which is known as a uh, hitter's league. George Eisenhart. I kind of like the idea of Kubitschek. You can, I, that'll work, but I want more. Okay. So I could get Hogan Stallings, who's a top 100 prospect. Um, and I have so many prospects just like him, right? I mean, I, I don't mind him. But I'd like to see if we can do something else. He's a top 100. He's an international guy. Gallegos. He's not that good. Clemmy. Low work ethic. I don't even really know what I'm looking for. I'm just sort of... I mean, Stallings works. I mean... I, he's And he's not really hitting, though. I mean, he's a, he's a top 100 prospect, but he's not hitting. So, I mean, is it really worth it? I'd almost rather have Aquino because he's a better fielder. And he's rule five... Not rule five eligible, but I'm not giving up either of those play. I'm not giving up wood... I mean, maybe I could give up Wood if you'd be willing to give me, like, Lara instead. Like, if I did that, this, and this. No. Okay, so they want Parker in order to make that deal happen. Um, Gallego is an extreme ground ball pitcher. But they like him. They like him a lot for some reason. Well, this is fine. Hernandez and Tony Bullard for Colby Kubitschek, who probably move right into our rotation with the movement in the extreme ground ball pitcher. Hopefully, he can turn into something. Can we get anything else? Ken. All right. Um, Sarmiento. He's garbage. Can we get anything else? And we'll start simming as soon as we finish this deal. He's making $3.4 million. So they really like that deal, but I don't want to give up any additional talent. Bring back Austin Martin. Samuel Zavala. All right, we're going to make this deal. So Tony Bullard will go to San Diego along with a couple of minor league pitchers for Colby Kubitschek. And Manny Hartley. Let's complete that deal. And so now we have a, a spot on the on the roster. Um, I think we can call Santa Bria back up. Or do we call Hins up? Reese Hins is raking. We're going to call him up. And go to our pitching staff, and who goes to the minors, I guess, is the question. Well, we got time, because he's not on the he's not on major league roster, so he is um he doesn't have to be put on the 40 man. So we don't have to make a decision right this second. Gotta find him though. 
There he is. And we'll, we'll put him on the 40 man. We will stick him in AAA, and Hartley will stick in AAA as well. All right. So that's that. Um, we're going to continue on right after this quick break. All right. We're back. I needed to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm stuck in my throat. I needed to eat something. All right. So we are back. We are ready to go. Uh, see if we can finish up the month of July strong here. Cassius Thomas about to make his big league debut uh, after suffering an injury. Um, picked him up in a trade last season from Houston. Uh, we now have three games at home against Texas, followed by four at Houston. So let's see how this week goes. 4-3 win. That's nice to see. Did he pitch long enough? He did not pitch long enough for the win, but he walks five, strikes out four, gives up three and five and a third. Bullpen gets it done, though. Wood hits his 13th home run. Kenny Gomez with his first two extra base hits. He's up to 419 here in the early on. 13 for his first 31. He's improved. He's up to three and a half stars, so uh, that's nice to see as well. Uh, so if we win here, we get back to 500, which would which would be a which would be nice after this these last three or four weeks it's been a real grind. So we lose it's three straight games that have ended four to three. Man, I want to get back to 500, and then we can start to think about you know adding to the team. But yeah, now we're three games under 500. Lose two out of three to Texas after winning two out of three from Houston. That's our third straight loss. Bounce back with a win there. So we're four games out of first place. Uh, we get RBIs from Arias, Gomez, Deegan, Cartwright, and Poisson. Arias and Deegan, Homer. Bullpen gets it done. So we're still, I mean, we're, th well, we're three games out of a wild card now. So the teams ahead of us have started to win. Three games out of a wild card, four games out of first place. I mean, we're still in it. Assuming, I mean, if we can have a couple decent weeks here ending up July, we win 3-1. So we went back-to-back -back games in Houston. So we're within three games of the lead now. Poisson with a home run, it looks like. Yep. Carden hits a home run. Thomas picks up his first major league win. Five innings of one-run baseball. You'll like to see it. Game three, game four in Houston. The 4-2 loss. So we're back to four games under 500. Um... Who goes to the minors? I mean, our bullpen has been pretty good, but I want to get Cole Franklin back up. I kind of, I mean, Nolasco has been awful. Doesn't strike anybody out. He's given up more than a hit an inning. A really good stamina, so we can go pretty far into the game. But, I mean, look at our ER, look at our bullpen areas. Our bullpen has been good. I think we move send Thayer down. I think we're going to send Thayer down. Bring Franklin up. Or not bring him up, but bring him off of the injured list, I should say. Put him back there. Put him in long relief slash middle relief. Have any of our... Jose Perez agreed to his contract. David Aldridge, they all agreed. Okay, cool. So all of our big-time draftees should be here ready to go now. There's Aldridge, there's Pino, there's Cousin, uh, and Kambal. We will disable AI promotion on all of them. We will start him in high A ball. Uh, all right, so big series here is the Red Sox are are that that wild card team right now. So I mean, we sweep them, we get within a game. If we get swept, we fall to seven out and pretty much seals our fate. We had six games against the Red Sox here over the next week and a half, so this is huge for us. First game in Boston, four nothing win. Poisson three for four, two RBIs, hits another home run. Gleason, five and a third shutout. Game two against the Red Sox. They're sending Stroman to the mound against us. And he beats us, or I should say we lose, six to five. Deegan, a couple of hits. Hins with a home run. Deegan with a home run. Beckway gets the loss. All right. Can we take the series? That would be nice. We're three games out of first place. We take the series against the Red Sox. Nope. So that's 
five, six, three and six in our last nine. Four games out of first place. And again, the problem is trading for prospects isn't going to work right now because nobody has any money. So if we go into our front office, we actually have a little bit of money for extensions because we have fans coming out. But if we go here, Stalling's on pace for 119 games. Perfect. Um, and we try to trade, I don't know. I mean, let's try to trade Josiah Gray since we know we're not going to be able to bring him back. You get one option. We get Brett Conine, who's injured in 30. If we retain... We get a bunch of, well, those are all starting pitchers, but none of them are any good. What if we do all players? Yeah, I mean, this isn't, I mean, this just isn't worth it. Like, why would we trade Josiah Gray for a player who's worse than him that just doesn't make any sense? Vasquez, Evan Mill, 32 years old. I'm good there. Angel Rondon, no. The Yankees offer us Brian Hudson. And he's 30, though. Again, I mean, I I love the movement in the extreme ground ball, but he is 30. Jason Parker, extreme fly ball. Get rid of veterans. Let's just look at prospects and regulars. That was Song's not terrible, but again, he's 30. Jordy Martinez looks all right. I'm going to try adding a pitcher or add a, a, a prospect that isn't a prospect to us that maybe the AI would like a little bit. Maybe we can do something there. Uh, again, I would trade Cologne, given the number of outfielders we have ahead of him at this point. Does that change things at all? We get Mikhail Hernandez, a 23-year-old. And it certainly changes things. I mean, it gives us additional options, but are any of them worth it? That's the key. Joe Mack. Creed Willems. So he's got a little bit of power. David Cruz, not a terrible option. OSA thinks he has the potential to be a number four or number five starter. His ratings have continued to increase over the years. Miller. He's 26. Ian Muller's not a bad catcher. We got a lot of catchers in our system, though. Tim Kate. Extreme ground ball. Again, 29 years old, though. That's kind of the problem. Uh, I'm not looking for somebody who's that old. That's not really going to work into our plans. Let's go talk to the Dodgers. I mean, Gru's not great, but Gray is, can, will they, okay, they can't take any, they can't take any money at all. Okay, that's fine. So I can't take on any additional contract. They can't take on any additional contract. That's good to know. So it's got to be a... Hmm, I like Nestrini. Sure. 
I actually like Nick Nestrini. 27 years old. Gives us some depth. David Grew is sort of the prospect piece in this. Hopefully he's got some room to grow. We're not going to save any money. We're going to save $618 because we have to retain the majority of Josiah Gray's contract. Um, at least I think we do. Yep, we can't back off at all. So that is fine. So we will make this deal with the Dodgers, bring in a couple of pitchers. We were never going to resign. Um, we were never going to resign. Uh, uh, let's move Grew up here. Put Nastrini there, put him there, and we will call up Kubicek. Grew, they want in double A. Okay, we will get him in double A then. We're going to put Kubicek in the rotation. Uh, I like the, the ground ball movement, sinker, slider, curveball pitcher. We'll see how that plays. All right, then we got th four games against LA, followed by three at Boston. See how this goes. See if there are any other deals that need to be made. We lose our third straight. We got a doubleheader here against the Angels. We win both ends of the doubleheader, though, so that's huge. Poisson has two RBIs. Deegan has two RBIs. Kubacek pitches six innings of one-run baseball, so that worked out well. Game two is an 11-5 victory. Poisson with his 26th home run. Arias, he's hitting fine. I mean, he's, you know, it's it's fine based on, on uh, um, his hitting ratings. He's doing fine. <laughs> Gutierrez, three RBIs. Crow Armstrong has three hits. Velasco gets the win. Okay. Final game of the series at home against LA. It's a 3 2 loss. So we split the four game series. We're four games out of first. We're three and a half out of the wild card. We got a three game series here against the Red Sox. Let's see how this series goes at home. We need to make some hay at home. Lose the first game six to three. Four and a half out of first, four and a half out of the wild card. We win the second game six to nothing. Wood, two for three, four RBIs. Thomas improves to two and oh. He's looked sharp in his four starts so far. Really only pitched, I don't even say pitched poorly and one just walked too many in this one, but has had a handful of good starts in a row. We need to take this series. Can we win this game against Boston and win the series? We do. So we went back to back games, six to nothing. Cartwright, three hits. Crow Armstrong, three hits, two RBIs. Stallings has a couple hits. Is he still on pace for less than 120 games? He is. Back away, pitches five innings in the spot start. All right, so three and a half games out of first place, two and a half games out of the wild card. Uh, we have a three game series here against Texas, which will take us into next month. So is there anything else that we wanted? The Cardinals and Astros make a deal. Junior Fernandez for Jesus Lopsy. Astros and the Rays. All right. Let's just really quickly. I think we don't need a bullpen. Our, our bullpen's been fine. We have the third best bullpen in the American League. Our starting pitching with Kubicek and Thomas. I mean, it's early, right? Thomas only made four starts. Kubicek has only made one. But um, early returns are obviously good. Uh, our offense continues to struggle. Um, I don't know what the solution is. Uh, like if we try to trade, maybe we trade Wood, bring up Parker. I mean, is that a thing? I mean, there's some interest in James Wood. It's a lot of interest in James Wood, actually. Gaston is... I mean, he could be a starter, potentially. Hmm. Not a lot of great talent, but actually most of this is 
pretty bad. So they're all three stars, but they're bad three star players. Interesting. What if we did that and let's see, look at all these prospects we have. What if we did Wood and Pineda? Does that change things at all? Not really. In fact, I don't think it changes it at all. Carson Williams, eh, a little bit. He gets a Vala from San Diego. Um, Pachico, Pina, Barrow, Batanti. Hey, let's look at Batanti. Maybe he's been passed up. Again, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to see what options are here. Like, I mean, I would retain. I mean, it's it's the contract is like negligible, but if we can get like make five more shops, I just want to make sure I do this the smart way. Let's look at starting pitching. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we are talking. I like Kendon Lavelle, high work ethic, second round pick in 2025. I like Lavelle. Ooh, Gage Webster. He's 24. I mean, that's... Gage Webster might be that guy, guys. All right, so let's do this. I want both Webster and Lavelle. So how can I make this work? So the Mets... Okay, so they'll take Pineda... And I don't need to retain. So Wood isn't, I mean, he's okay. Uh, he's on, he was on pace for his highest war season. But we have some bats that I think make him replaceable. In return, we get Gage Webster, 70 stuff, 60 movement. The control's a little light, but five great pitches. Doesn't throw particularly hard, but looks like he could be a solid piece for us. Syracuse. Let's look at prospects. So the other one was with Houston. I want that pitcher from Houston as well. So we'll have to... Uh, wow, he looks really good. 11th round pick. Number 9 prospect in baseball. You better hurry up and stick him on your 40, man, my guy. Um, Montefar. No times a thousand. Danny Ray. I can't be serious. Willie Perez. Meh, low work ethic. Trelongo. Very, very average. Caleb. Yeah, they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of prospects. But I would be fine with this. Wood and Pineda for Gage Webster. We pick up uh, another solid pitching arm. We give up James Wood, who we just signed to a nothing contract. Um, but again, it'll free up about $3 million. Um, he's insignificant. He's unknown. All right, I'm going to make that deal. Let me pick up Gage Webster. And we will, where is he? He's right there. We got to put him on the 40 man. We will disable. We will start him in triple A. And then the other deal I wanted to make was with Houston. I want that pitcher. Kinden Lavelle. So they would take him for Batanti straight up. And I think that is a really good bargain for us. 24-year-old, second-round pick a couple years ago. Potentially good movement, good fastball, okay changeup. 
slider that's slightly below average. High work ethic, though. Um, I mean, I just went through this with them on with the last deal I made, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time looking at this. But... I'm fine with this. So we're going to get Kinden Lovell for Eric Batanti. So we make a couple of deals there to strengthen our minor league pitching. We'll put Lavelle. So we've picked up we picked up Gage Webster and Kinden Lavelle and David Grew at the trade deadline. Uh, we send out James Wood. So we do have to call up another hitter. So we can just call up Sam, Santa Bria. Uh, we will put him right back in the lineup in right field every day. So he will start every day now. Uh, Ardone can play first. He will go to right. Uh, I don't have a center fielder. Gomez can't play center. Santa Bria. So Crow Armstrong is going to have to play against lefties in center, which whatever. No, we're just missing a DH. We're just missing a DH. So who DHs against lefties? Reese Hins. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I think we've added uh, some nice young pitchers. Um, I'm hoping maybe we can move on from Nolasco in the offseason and give uh, one of those three young starters a chance. And some of these guys will probably get a shot this year. Gage Webster, I really, I mean, if the, pro, if the control comes along at all, um, he's going to be a great pitcher for us. Uh, the other two, uh, Kendon Lavelle, and David Grew, maybe a little bit less talented, but still some some pretty solid depth. And this is the way we need to do it because most of our drafting has been we've been drafting offense. We got a ton of offensive talents. So we need to use some of those players that are getting lapped by um, uh, by other players with uh, with some uh, uh, with some trades. So all right. Let's see how these last two games of the month go. We're three and a half games out of first place, two and a half games out of the wild card. We got two games at Texas to finish up the month of July. That one sucks. An eight six loss. So four games out of first now, four games under 500. And let's see how this final game goes. The 5 1 loss. Damn it. So Texas has knocked us five games out of first place and four and a half out of the wild card. We're 13th in runs scored, 7th in runs against. We're below average in uh, uh, defensively. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Our, our two main, like, pitchers, Joey Estes and Ryan Gleason, have not pitched well. Kubitschek pitched pretty well in his first two starts, didn't pitch well in his third start, or pitched well in his first start, didn't pitch well in his second start. Cassius Thomas has had really a handful of good starts for us. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just look at player development. So Garcia gets a little worse. That's a little concerning, but he's still young. Gomez gets better. Gage Webster, uh, we just picked him up. He looks like he got a little better too. Osvaldo Tito, he's at second baseman with the weird profile. Um, he needs to get called up to a ball. We just need to see if he can, uh, get it done player. Oh, he's injured. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So ale batter of the month, Shane Sasaki batter of the month in the NL Acuna. Sarlin Polanco is your AL pitcher of the month. Dan Kiristis is your pitcher of the month in the NL rookie of the month in the AL Elijah green in the NL Roger Gomez. Uh, and we are 55 and 60. Uh, we are drawing about 3,000 fans more per game than we were last season. Our revenue's up almost f uh, just over 14%. Um, hopefully, we can have a good month of August because the division is there for the taking. The Astros are only 60 and 55. So the division is there for the taking. We just need our young players to start to hit a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we just need our young players to start to hit a I think maybe, yeah, like Guerra's not hitting 192. 
I, 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 next year he's going to have to go down to the minors. I mean, that's just sort of the way it is. Stallings is on pace for 118 games. Good. So let's go in the right direction. Um, yeah, Ardone isn't hitting. Cardin isn't hitting. Cartwright's never going to hit for a high on base percentage. It's going to be strictly batting average, um, but he's at 282. Um, Poisson, the average is a little light. Yeah, I mean, you look at our OPS pluses. I mean, it's Hins who doesn't really count because he only has 12 at bats, but Poisson, Santabria, and Cartwright are the only three players that are above average. So um, we're going to run with this. Hopefully we don't suffer any injuries. And next episode will either be the off season or it'll be um, the last couple weeks of the regular season. So keep your fingers crossed, guys, that we can make a run at it and we'll come back middle of September. Otherwise, we will come back at the end of the regular or end of the, the postseason, I guess. So as always, guys, appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support. I'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.